the greatest American alive. Before we get started, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. You're asking yourself, Project Daddy, why in the world do you have on these overalls? Number one, I have to do this work. Fighting for freedom is hard work, especially when you're espousing rhetoric that ain't nobody heard before, man. This is brand new information. Number two, Project Daddy ain't nothing but a nigga on a motherfucking plantation. This is the truth. Project Daddy ain't nothing but a nigga on a plantation. And all the other slaves surrounding Project Daddy telling me one thing. Get back to work, Project Daddy. Please get back to work. Both coming. You can't be here talking about freedom. For some reason, we don't want to have a conversation about actual freedom in America, but I'm here to tell you that no matter what your situation is, you are the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. Please forgive me as I sip my coconut water. I need to hydrate myself because y'all thinking that Project Daddy is absolutely nuts. How in the world are you talking about this damn freedom? <laughs> Today, the question of all questions is, it has a pre-question. The question before we get to the question is, how do you feel about Nazi Germany? When you think about Nazi Germany and Hitler running wild, I know Hitler is a crazy, psychopath, murderous person, yes? And now, what do we think about the people who lived in Nazi Germany? What were they supposed to do to stop Hitler? That's the question I want to know. That's the pre-question before the question. Question number two, what are the American people supposed to do when the American government is running wild around the globe? killing people what are the american people supposed to do when the american army and the american navy and the american air force are going around the globe killing people how will history look at the american person i wonder if a nation can be introspective but i know her people can and so as i talk to the greatest american alive i want to know how is history going to look at america when it comes to vietnam how is history going to look at america when it comes to iraq or Afghanistan? How will history look at America when it comes to Syria and millions of dead bodies? Are these questions too big for the American person to answer? Are we not supposed to have these conversations? Please, let's go ahead and turn on the football game. Let's watch the Cowboys. Go Cowboys! Let's watch these boys play some uh, basketball. Let's go Lakers! Hey! R.I.P. Kobe. <laughs> Hell yeah! Man, shit, get mad at me. You might get mad at me. I don't give a shit. I'm going to stand in the pocket, nigga. I don't give a fuck. In a time of great economic despair, in a time of such great political despair, I, man, fuck your feelings. It's nasty out here, man. It's wartime. Poor people, economically challenged people in America, they don't even know that they're fighting a war. They have no idea that they're engaged in a class war, and they just sitting back watching TV and Instagram and shit. You got the most powerful device the world has ever seen, and you're looking at some damn titties. I'm not condemning nobody. I like to look at pretty titties too. It's phenomenal. Yes, it is phenomenal titties they are. Let's keep going, yes? If we're going to fight against an economic and oppressive system, then we have to have some artillery. Story time. When Project Daddy was in the United States Navy, I had a job. It was aviation ordnance. That means that my job was to prepare and load bombs. Why was Project Daddy preparing and loading bombs? To drop bombs on the enemy. So if you're engaged in any type of political or social or economic warfare, you have to drop bombs on these people. And Project Daddy is finna drop some political bombs on the American person, yes? And I only wanna ask questions. I wanna challenge you to do the work. In America right now, when it comes to the class war on the poor, they're not using artillery, they're using the media. And so as we watch movies and we consume their entertainment, they're telling us that the poor people are bad people. It doesn't have to be a conspiracy for you to understand that the person who's writing your content doesn't understand your life. This person doesn't represent you. They're in a different tax bracket and you're looking down saying, this is how we're supposed to think about working people. This is how you're supposed to think about yourself. When it comes to the movies that raised us, I wanted to know what was the rite of passage movie when it came to like minority children. Stand By Me and Goonies were two movies that I really liked as a child. It showed like the coming of age of young men. And I wanted to know what were those movies for the minority community? Was it Boys in the Hood? Was it Menace to Society? What was the coming of age movie? And when I say this, they implant these thoughts into our minds and they tell us that all these people are bad people, you know, ghetto, all this type of shit. Yes, man, fuck that shit. Everything in America is based on an industry. Making movies is an entire industry. So you have people at the top telling the people at the bottom what they can produce, what they can and cannot say. Censorship on a mass scale. When you look at the budget for these films, when you see how many people it takes to make one of these movies, so many producers, executive producers, when you see how many people and how much money it takes to make these movies, then you have to ask the question, is this mass hypnosis? These people are programming me on what to think. At Houston Community College, Project Day learned about agenda setting. Today, we're looking at the agenda setting function theory which suggests that the media can't tell you what to think,
but it can tell you what to think about. The agenda setting function theory was developed by Maxwell McCombs and Donald Shaw in 1972 as a result of their study of North Carolina voters during the 1968 presidential election campaign. This study found a correlation between issues that voters believed were important and issues that the media gave prominence to. In agenda setting, the media tells you what to think. They show you images and from those images, they get implanted in your mind and all of a sudden, hey, I thought about this goddamn mass control, motherfucker, mass hypnosis. Hold on a second, man. Please allow me to drink my coconut water. I have to hydrate myself because I know that y'all think that Project Daddy is absolutely nuts. While, while we're here and I'm thinking that America can be introspective, let's have a conversation about the corporation versus the drug dealer. In movies, they show the drug dealer as being a really bad person destroying the community. In all of the media that we consume, they show us a drug dealer. He's the worst of the worst. He's the absolute worst of the worst, yes? But when it comes to corporations, we don't condemn corporations. Ronald McDonald or the drug dealer? Who's worse, the drug dealer or McDonald's? Who's worse, the drug dealer or Jack in the Box? Who's worse, the drug dealer or Chick-fil-A? Who's worse for the community, the drug dealer or Coca-Cola? I'm not worried about cocaine. I'm worried about Coca-Cola. Cocaine is not causing diabetes in America. Tell the truth and get some power. Can we please look and say corporation bad and the person in our community who's trying to make some money, who's putting money back into the community, Maybe he's not such a bad guy. Why does Pfizer have a monopoly on mental illness? Can I treat my mental illness however I see fit? I mean, a prescription for Zoloft or something is probably over $200 a month, and I ain't got it right now, but the drug dealer down the corner, he's going to work with me so I can get through today. Because being poor in America is traumatic. Being economically challenged in America is traumatic. Project Daddy, why are you wearing those overalls? Because I have to do this work. It's hard fighting for freedom when we hate ourselves. It's a nasty thing. Me watching movies, me watching Boys in the Hood told young Project Daddy, you should hate yourself. Me watching Young Fresh told me that you should hate yourself and your daddy. The media has programmed Project Daddy to look in the mirror and see someone that he despises. And now when I look in the mirror, I see somebody I love. The only way I was able to make that transformation was to consume better information, to turn off that bullshit and to start digesting some real shit. How the fuck can you fight for power if you believe in the rhetoric in which the enemy gave you? That's what the mass media is. That's what hypnosis is. Tell the truth and get some power. That's why Project Daddy's wearing these overalls. Because I'm still on the plantation with a bunch of motherfucking slaves who are regurgitating the information that came from the slave owner. You should do this. And you should say that. And you should act like this. Motherfucker, I want a political party that represents me. Motherfuckers that wear overalls. Hard-working American citizens who have to do this work. I'm looking for you, the greatest American alive, to be a hero. Put your boots on and goddamn put your overalls on and come and do this work with me. Come and be a hero. Come and be a freedom fighter. And if you want to support Project Daddy, look at the bottom of the screen. Cash app, PJDDY. I'm trying to fight hard on behalf of you, the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. Because when it comes to the corporation versus the American citizen, I'm going to take the American citizen every single time. You cannot have an institution where the American citizen goes to work and all of his labor and all of his profit goes to someone who's not even a part of the corporation. They're just a silent investor over there getting a dividend check every quarter, making money off of your sweat, off of your labor. The American citizen invests in his company with his life. Nah, I don't have it right now. I can't buy no stocks. I can't buy the stock right now. But I'll give you my blood, I'll give you my sweat, I'll give, I'll give you my tears, I'll sit in traffic for an hour and a half so I can come punch in the clock so I can make sure this product gets to the American person. I am doing my duty as an American citizen to contribute to this economy, but you don't value sweat labor. You don't value blood currency. You don't value the worth of the American citizen, and that's why we have to do this work. That's why you're the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. Man, we got two years before the election of 2024. We got two years to be prepared to come and fight back against whoever the opponent is. And so I tell you what, yay 2024. Yay 2024. Let's go. And if you can't produce a better candidate for me, if you can't produce someone who was homegrown in America, came from an urban community and rose to the upper elite, who was still talking about freedom for you, the greatest American alive, if you can't produce a more charismatic person, then don't even have a conversation with me. 
Yay 2024. Yay 2024. Let's go. We're going to get some political freedom in America. We're having a whole new conversation. It's social guerrilla warfare tactics. And I'm dropping bombs on the American people. I'm dropping bombs on the American government because it's time to fight back against an oppressive economic and political system. The greatest American alive, baby. You are the greatest American alive. 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 If anything that I said resonated with you, please share this video with everybody you know. It's freedom time, y'all. If you want to contribute, just know that I'm just going to buy more equipment. I'm just going to print more pamphlets. We just going to grind because there is no cost when it comes to liberation. It is a continuous fight. I wake up and I think about this. I go to sleep and I think about this. I dream about freedom. Project Daddy dreams about freedom. And I can't wait till the American person is finally free. The greatest American alive.